what's going on guys i'm ben welcome to the channel if you guys are new here and you haven't seen any of my other videos normally i do dual sport or adventure motorcycle type content with a fairly heavy off-road bias but ever since i got my first e-bike i have just absolutely fallen in love with these things and apparently it cannot wait to be tested out so we're gonna get this thing unboxed put together we'll take it out on the road and we'll take it out on some pretty hairy trails and we'll see just exactly what this thing has to offer got our seat which is a very nice wide plush saddle a reflector with a running light for years i would cut zip ties off of things that i purchased and then go to the store and buy a whole package of zip ties to zip tie other things up and now i've just realized that it makes a lot more sense to just take a little tiny screwdriver like this pry the little catch off and just pull the line out and then just reuse them why not? So here we've got a fairly flat 26 by 4.8, absolutely massive front tire. Tread pattern doesn't look extremely aggressive. It looks like this does come with a quick release, which will be nice. Our battery is gonna be internal to the frame, which is really kind of nice, cleans things up a bit. Charge port looks like it's right there. Some spacers. I think I just realized why they sent this thing with the front air down so much, and it's because I'm actually gonna have to kind of squish this to get it past the brake caliper, since this is such a ridiculously wide tire. Slide that guy in. So I've kind of got it fixed now, but as you'll notice, there is a little bit of a wobble to my front sprocket here, and that's just, I think, due to the shipping issues and I think I've got it straight enough that it should work just fine now. I'm sure they would send me a new one, but I want to get on this thing and ride it. So we've got the fairly common seven speed Shimano shifter up here. And that of course is attached to the Shimano tourney derailleur on the back here. Same CST roly poly 26 by 4.8 tire on the back. And that is mounted on a 48 volt DC output 1000 watts. Single piston hydraulic calipers front and back made by FYY. See through reservoirs on the front here with some really nice feeling levers. It looks like our hydraulic line might sort of be in the way of our headlight there, but we will test that out. Now on the right side of our RST guide forks here, we've got this compression damping adjustment here. And if you do turn it all the way, that is going to lock this thing out. So essentially that would make the front of this a, I guess, hard front end. There would be no suspension at all, or you can back it off one. And then essentially each one of these clicks going that direction is going to let the suspension in the front compress just a little bit easier. Over here on the driver's left, we're gonna have our preload adjustment. Basically what this is gonna do is change how much load is pre-applied to the spring in here, and it will actually cause the bike to ride a little bit higher. As far as the suspension on the rear goes here, we've got quite the linkage system going on here and that is all damped and sprung by the HLT 100. So the back tire was inflated and it looks like it is inflated to 11.4 PSI. So I think we will fill it up to an even 18 and call that good. I was starting to wonder why this was taking so long. It's probably because these tires are massive. And they do say inflate to 30 PSI. I'm not sure if that's really gonna be the max. That's usually what they'll put on a tire. And essentially all that's really telling you is that if you need that type of carrying capacity, you can fill it up that high, but generally you don't really want to because it's gonna give you a really rough ride. So that's why we're going with 18. We can always adjust it later if we need to. Might as well throw this thing on the charger while I'm doing this one. And we've got our box with the owner's manual, a wrench that I suppose I could have used a couple more tools that I didn't use. And then we've got our charger itself here. Output here is labeled as three amps, meaning that this should charge up the battery pretty quickly. That's a pretty decent sized charger. Grab our left side here, which is gonna be left hand threaded. Ah, now I see what the wrench they gave us is for.
So our pedals here are metal, fairly wide in both directions, and they have some pretty sharp little teeth on them. You will also have this quick adjustment here, which is super nice. That's so annoying to have to actually get a set of tools out when you're out on the trail to try to adjust where the seat height is. Kind of bottoms out there. So if you wanted to go any lower than this, you would actually physically have to chop off the bottom portion of the seat post. I think it's probably just hitting the bend here. But in this lowest position here, I'll show you what I look like on the bike. So I am 5'10 with a 31 inch inseam height and oh my gosh this thing is a monster i might have to cut that down <laughs> so that is pedal just about up as high as it'll go with my 31 inch inseam height this thing i think is going to be pretty comfortable to pedal i'd love to show you what this would look like up at the highest seat setting but honestly i don't know that i can get up that high So we get our dash plugged in here and get this thing powered on for the first time. Hold the power button down. Oh, look at that. Wow. That is a very, very nice display. So up at the top left here, we get a total of five battery bars. Looks like we're missing one. Puts us at 49.6 volts. Speed read out on the left, as well as one in the center here. And then on the side, we've actually got a wattage output. The odometer, as well as the mode and the pedal assist level. Oh, we've got an auto shutoff countdown going on here. Five pedal assist modes. What if we hold that set button down? General settings. Ooh, speed limit. 25. 99. We'll go with that. Kilometers per hour. Miles per hour. Battery, 48 volts. Mode, normal. Pow, eco. Nah, who am I kidding? Let's go with power. What's in the advanced menu? Current limit. Starts at 15... We can go, I guess, just up to 18. Throttle follow. So that must be like a cruise control, I guess? Oh, yes. Assist max. So now we have a pedal assist nine max. Whoa! What? <laughs> what the heck was that? Apparently if you hold the minus button down, it puts it in walk mode. So I don't know if I goofed something up in the settings here or what's going on, but it seems like my thumb throttle is not working. I did figure out if you press the power button once, the headlight will come on. And it looks like it is a pretty decently bright headlight for the size of it anyways. We'll definitely go and test that out at night. So in power mode, pedal assist nine. We'll give the pedal a crank here and see what this thing will do. All right, let's get this battery out of here. And the little locking mechanism. Ooh, it's a double locking mechanism. That's nice. As long as you know it, I guess, before you hit it twice and then drop it. It says green, good to go. But of course, since we know that we're not completely charged, that is not entirely true. So this is labeled as a 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery. Let's see how much this thing weighs. Looks like eight and a half pounds. We'll throw this thing on some scales. So there we go, 39.9 and 44.9 back there. So it actually looks like the front tells me 40.5 every once in a while, so we'll just go with that. And now the back showing 45.6. That's 86.1 pounds. So I'm gonna get this thing charged up to the full 100% and then we'll take it out for a ride and see what it'll do. All right, so we are out here in the Yoda Bikes natural habitat, or I guess we're, we're getting there anyways. We'll hit some gravel, hit some single track, and really give this thing a good off-road test. But before we do that, I figured we would run this section of rather bumpy blacktop here, and we'll see just what I can squeak out of this thing. Uh, I guess I never really mentioned anything about the kickstand, so I will say that it is nice that it's out of the way for the uh, pedals when you're backing the bike up to move it around, but you actually can take off with it down, so be careful of that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I did change my current limit to 18 amps from the 15 that it came out of the box. It seems like that did help me squeak a couple more miles an hour out of the top speed. I did see 
32 on more or less a flat grade before, so we'll see what we hit here with me pedaling along. Uh, I did change the throttle speed to full. I don't know if that helped anything. The throttle follow is set to yes, but it doesn't really seem like that does anything. Uh, I guess maybe it does, and I'm just not aware of what it's actually supposed to do, but it is not a cruise control like I had hoped. I have been on this for 12.1 miles today already. The battery is showing three bars and 49 volts. We'll knock the pedal assist mode up to nine. Put a timer on the screen and go. So power kicks in now, slowly ramps up. I'm helping it out a bit. Start going through some gears. Up to seven. 26. And I'm putting some power down, but not a huge amount. With that big front ring on there, I can really pedal along pretty good and keep a good pace. Yeah, now we're going uphill. <laughs> this thing feels super comfortable on the gravel. Honestly, just about as comfortable as it does on the road. The Fairly aggressive tires uh, seem to hang on to this surface quite well. So if I stop pedaling, it kind of slows down a bit. When we hit the pedals again, I don't know if you guys can hear it ramp up or not. It kind of slowly pours on the power until we're kind of a little bit higher up on the wattage scale. I've never seen this above uh, or any any higher than than two two bars to the top. And it seems like when I bumped up that amperage from 15 to 18 it seems like that that's what got me that uh I, I guess full power and i don't know if that actually is full it's a thousand watt nominal motor but supposedly according to the website it peaks out at 1700 watts and i also found some information on the website i think about this model it says that it does not have a cadence sensor it's that it has a torque sensor but everything that that I've noticed makes it seem like this is a cadence sensor. And the sort of telltale sign for a cadence sensor, as far as I'm aware, I guess maybe I'm wrong about this, is that essentially you can ghost pedal this thing. So I'm putting very, very minimal effort, just enough to spin the pedals basically. And I mean, this thing is, I guess not doing top speed. So I don't know, maybe it does measure the input. Sure doesn't seem like it though. Okay, so we'll knock this thing down a few gears because we're coming up on my turn. And I guess you guys might have noticed that I added a few accessories here. I will, whoa, put links. Good thing we got monster truck tires here. I will put links for that stuff down in the description. Both of them are things that I do not like to ride without. So that's why I made sure that I had them even before we went out today. Oh, wow. <laughs> so if you guys remember the last review that I did, woo, I came through here and said that I don't think that there are any bicycles that are built to do this sort of thing but look at that <laughs> yodo e-bike prove me wrong here with this thing this is an absolute hill climbing and rock crawling beast now obviously it's just a, a one-wheel drive bicycle Woo. but with this suspension with these giant 26 inch tires that are almost five inches wide. I feel probably a lot more comfortable rocking through all this tall, beautiful tall foliage here. Oh, with the, the hidden rocks than I should. Uh, I mean, this thing does excellent out here. It's gonna give you one heck of a workout and it's certainly doing that for me on pedal assist, whatever I'm at now. Basically, I just wanted to run away from me. Three, oh, it is doing more than, more than good enough. I'm going to take a break to give myself a breather here. Uh, just barely. Oh, yeah. Whew. I would not want to do that too many times, but yet still possible. Okay, where's the trail? Use a little bit of pedal assist here to get me going. Not pedal assist, throttle. Uh, the throttle does have some modulation, but because it is a thumb throttle, especially in bouncy situations like this, it is pretty hard to keep a steady pace on it. And that's where I think a twist throttle is a little bit easier. So this is climbing up probably more than the 15% grade that, uh, that they tell you that you should be climbing. Uh, but it did quite well at that. Batteries saying we're at 47.5 volts. Uh, and I, I really have been pounding this thing today. Before I turned the camera on, I was pretty much running it at, well, as close to 
top speed as I could get it. So if you beat this thing, you're definitely not gonna get the, whatever, 65 to 80 mile range or whatever it is they say in the pamphlet. But man, this suspension is so nice. And I do have the compression damping backed all the way off so it is as soft as it can be. And honestly, as long as I'm just kind of staying on the seat, I think I'm getting stung by a hornet. <laughs> Ow! Probably picked one up off of these flowers. Uh, it does seem like it is perfect for this type of riding. Uh, maybe if I get up over the bars a little bit and get the wheels off the ground, I will need to crank that up. Uh, but for this, it feels good. And I guess, honestly, I probably should have put that in that lock position. Ooh, let's test out the brakes. Should have put that in lock position when I was really trying to put the power down. And essentially, that's what that's for, basically. Just locks it out so you can put all your power into the gears rather than having the suspension soak up some of your jabs as you're standing up and pedaling. But I'll tell you that, Suspension on here is the best that I have ever felt on a bicycle. We'll see whether or not that will transfer over to a track that is made specifically for mountain bikes. I feel like I can definitely tell that I want to be over the front a little bit more, which honestly, with my frame size being uh, my <laughs> my body, not, not the bike frame size, at 5'10", I would say that I have to agree that 5'9", uh, which is the sort of bottom Woo, end of the spectrum. I believe the, the manual says anywhere from 5.9 to whoa, 6.5 or something like that. And I would say 5.9, you're probably going to struggle a little bit just like me with my 31 inch inseam. I mean, I, I feel like I'm kind of having a hard time uh, feeling like I can easily get my foot to the ground. Now, obviously, it's just a woo, that felt nice. Just a bicycle, even though it does weigh, I guess, 80 some pounds. It should be easy enough for me to kind of handle it, even though I can't reach the ground very well. As far as standing up on it, I actually feel really good. This is kind of where, whoa, I feel the best. Maybe I'm going to turn that pedal assist setting down. I think I could honestly squeeze these just with one, but with two, especially on this hand, I feel like I'm almost crashing my fingers and I have not found an adjustment on these. It says in the manual that there should be a, a screw there that you can adjust the position of it, but it doesn't seem like there is anything there. So we'll try this on seven instead and see if I can handle that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's gonna get me going a little faster than I wanna be. And I think that's kind of where the, the sort of slow ramp up of power is gonna be kind of difficult because out here you don't really want predictable power. I mean, I guess you want to be able to predict it, but you want it right away when you need to go up a hill, not halfway up the hill type of thing. So that, I guess, makes this type of riding a little difficult, but it does really handle this stuff good, though. Uh, the, the big tires, I think, definitely seem to be helping me. I mean, it did take me a second to kind of figure out how much input and how much of a lean I had to to do to make it do what I wanted. Oh, what am I doing? I should be running those over. Oh, not those though. But now I really feel pretty good out here. And obviously these tires, like I said, are really meant more for that first trail that we're on. The bigger the tire, the better the traction to a point. And then you kind of get to the law of diminishing returns. Don't really have the digging power that a thinner tire would. So obviously it kind of depends on what you want to be doing with it. But I've got to say, I am, oh, <laughs> not too disappointed because i know that these tires are definitely helping me out as far as the overall comfort of the ride goes and i'm feeling pretty darn comfy on this thing when i stand up that is when i'm sitting down i definitely feel too far back and that's again where i think maybe somebody with a little bit longer legs and arms and torso is going to feel a little bit more at home on this bike but i can totally ride it I and mean, i would not i would not try to discourage somebody from buying this bike if they were my size. As long as you got the confidence and do some basic practice, I think you can do quite a bit on this bike. Advanced features ahead, use caution. Uh oh. Uh huh, advanced. Trying out my new MSR knee pads here. Got those from Rocky Mountain ATV, one of my sponsors for motorcycle gear. This stuff actually transfers over pretty well. I got the jersey and the gloves on too, and I definitely am glad that I wore these and not my regular motorcycle gloves because these breathe a lot better. It is warm out here. And if you are somebody that already owns a motorcycle and you're kind of looking at these to maybe access some amazing trails in your area, like I've got here, man, I mean, these things are so much fun. I honestly have been riding my e-bikes now more than I've been riding my motorcycles, partially because I can slap a trailer on them and pull the kids around with me so I get to actually do a lot more riding than I would otherwise. But man, they are just so nice to be able to get you out and ride trails like this. This bike is 
not really meant for what I'm doing here. It does do incredibly well at this. However, it's not really optimized for it. Whoa. Oh man, I should have done this from the start. As long as it doesn't end up in my tire, I think that'll actually be a lot better. Recording something, I don't know. You guys have been looking at getting one of these cameras. Don't. <laughs> don't buy any action camera. They all seem like they're garbage. But don't worry, I have a second, which is labeled with a question mark on the bottom because it is the less reliable of the two. We'll see if we can get any footage out of this one. Ah, whoo. Take a little bit of a sip from my MSR hydration pack here. Got all sorts of storage in the big one. Apologize for the fact that this is just one giant infomercial, but if you're gonna do YouTube as a career, you pretty much have to be a salesman nowadays because I'd go broke if I had to rely on AdSense. But huge thanks to everybody that has been using my affiliate links. And if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these, you can check down in the description. I will have a link to the bike. And I believe that will woo, help me out. I'll put information on whether or not I get a commission on it, as well as if I can offer you any sort of discount down in the description, along with all those other affiliate links. And if you guys don't know how those work, basically just click on a link and whoa! <laughs> Wasn't ready for the precision that that took. Use those links and buy anything from the websites that they take you to. It doesn't cost you, oh my goodness, I don't know where I'm going. I could have done that. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it allows me to keep making videos like this for you guys. And I definitely appreciate that because I sure do enjoy it. Hopefully you guys do too. Yeah, that, that break, if that was just, I don't know, just a little bit further out, I wouldn't be smashing my fingers. Wow, wow. What do we have for bars now? One bar, which I guess, should be completely expected with what I'm doing to this thing today. <laughs> and I don't think I'll get anywhere near the range that they call out, but with this big 20 amp hour battery in here, I would assume if you were actually pedaling at a normal pace and not trying to keep up with 30 mile an hour traffic. Oh, here's a good test. Oh, a little jarring, but <laughs> darn nice for, for as inexpensive as this bike is currently anyways. I kind of can't believe all of the stuff that you get in this package and i don't know that much about e-bikes but i have been doing a lot of research on them recently and man i i'm pretty excited to test these big tires out on some snow this winter uh, but honestly i think other than that other than the extra wide or extra fat tires this bike is exactly i think what i would purchase if i was going to purchase one i wouldn't want a battery pack any bigger because then it gets heavier too heavy and the wattage output that this thing has seems to be more than sufficient. Uh, like, I, like I showed, we only got up to 28, but like I said, I did see a little bit faster than that, even though I don't think it's really supposed to go that fast. So I do wish it was a little bit snappier, but honestly, <laughs> I really, really like this bike. And I really like the last one that I tested. If you guys want to see that video, I can put a link for that down in the description too. That That is a really, really cool kind of more street going bike where this thing is obviously, like I said, kind of all off road. And the only reason that I kind of knock the tires is just because I know you'd get maybe a little bit more reaction out of the bike or a little quicker reaction time, both on the road and out here with a skinnier tire. These, th this fat tire is really, really gonna be good or is really gonna shine when you're running sand or loose, really loose dirt uh, or even snow where or even just kind of the crash into the brush like I showed earlier, that's gonna be ideal for bouncing off rocks and stuff. You're gonna have a lot better chance with this bike and these bigger tires than you would with anything else really in trails like that. But for out here, eh, it's certainly not ideal. However, uh, it's definitely usable. I mean, I, like I said, I, I did a lot of bicycling in my youth, but that was more like BMX and not a whole lot of this. So I am pretty new to all of this even though I guess I do have a sufficient amount of dual sport and single track. Whoa! Yeah, talking about how great I am. <laughs> I almost put it in the pond. But what I'm trying to say is I'm not an expert and you don't need to be to ride this out here to have an absolutely amazing time. I cannot wait to get back out here and hopefully not end up like that guy. So I gotta say, I am definitely not disappointed with anything really on this bike so far. It's about what I expected or even much better. But there's a couple things that I've noticed that, eh, I guess I feel are, are worth 
talking about anyways. First of all, if we are on pedal assist level one, uh, I guess this is gonna take a little while. Actually, that fired up pretty quickly. Maybe this has something to do with that uh, follow, throttle follow setting. But even on pedal assist one, we're able to get pretty close to to top speed. Which, honestly, I, I guess is kind of nice. I mean, you can pretty easily modulate it with the throttle, the speed of the throttle itself. So, I mean, I guess it really makes sense. Why, why cap yourself off? I mean, I guess it kind of works as a bit of a cruise control then, but it's not really that hard to modulate it either. So, anyway, we're up to 26 miles an hour. Of course, if I add my own pedaling, which if I didn't say this before, it's really a, a nice uh, a nice cadence or nice pedal speed with even the more or less top speed of the motor. I mean, I, I could I could pretty much cruise around like this pedaling, I mean, the, the entire ride, especially if I was looking to get some exercise. I've ridden other bikes where essentially at top speed, you just end up ghost pedaling. Uh, being able to kind of keep up with the speed with the crank is nice for a couple reasons. One, you get exercise, which is always good. And uh, two, you're able to kind of help conserve power because you're actually putting some power into the back wheel and motion of the bike. These grips will pretty much adjust to wherever you want them on the fly. Doesn't really seem like it's been too big of an issue, but if you really want to lean on them, you might want to pull them off and stick some glue underneath them. So we look down through there. It's kind of, I don't know, it seems like it's in the suspension. It, like kind of waddles back and forth. The brakes definitely seem to work pretty well. They do have a little bit of a pulse to them. Um, and I've only got, I don't know, what do I have on here total? 22.9 for the trip so far, 24.2 total miles. And we have a blinking battery at 43.5 volts. And I've gotta say, it's nice to have these mirrors tucked away here, but you're almost gonna want something that goes out here or up and over to really be able to see, because I kind of have to lean around myself to actually be able to see out of those. I'm not entirely sure that these brakes are bedded all the way in, but we'll give it one more test. Let's see now. Yeah, that front one is pretty much all to the bar, all the way to the bar. So, I mean, that's that's about all you're gonna get out of it. I do really like having the nine, or the option to have nine different pedal assist modes. I guess I never really showed you guys what it does on setting one. It's about right around 10 miles an hour, not bad. And I think it jumps a couple miles an hour each each increment that you go up, two or three miles you pick up and kind of feel the little boost every once in a while. So that I definitely like having just three settings is not nearly enough. I really like to be able to kind of fine tune it, especially if I'm riding with somebody else. Isn't that pretty? See, you just don't really get to see this stuff on a motorcycle. You're just going too fast. Pretty cool. So the seat itself is actually really comfortable, uh, even though I, like I said, do wish it was a little bit closer to the bars. Man, I mean, I don't know if I've ever sat on a more comfy seat. I mean, I guess it, it could be a little wider if you're looking for a little more comfort. Obviously, the seat's easy enough to switch out, but I think this seat is totally usable and not something that I would see myself upgrading personally. So my battery bar is flashing one bar, and it says 39.9 volts when I'm on the throttle, and it seems like this is all I'm getting out of it. I guess we're climbing a little bit now. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's almost like pulsing the motor on and off. It apparently has changed its mind about whether or not it's willing to help me. And I don't think I'm getting anything at all when I'm pedaling. And if I hit the throttle, I'm not hearing anything coming from the motor at all. So it looks as though I am on my own after 28.1 ridiculously hard miles. I wouldn't want to do this for very long, but it's possible. So here's what the headlight looks like, or at least I, I hope you guys can see it. I guess I'll stand up a little bit. That maybe will help a tad. Uh, it's not anything that I would categorize as super bright or super wide. Uh, it's kind of the opposite of both of those. It's enough to light up my lane of traffic and maybe a little bit in the ditch and a little bit in the opposite lane. Uh, it's not something that I think I would want to be doing 30 miles an hour with. I think if I was going to go that fast, I would want something a little brighter, uh, but it could certainly get you home at the end of the day. Now, as far as that tail light goes, it's not bad. Uh, I mean, it definitely is going to alert anybody behind you that there is something up ahead. Uh, of course, it's not gonna tell anybody when you're gonna stop or anything like that. Let's see if I can hurt myself off-road. Uh, it actually doesn't do a half bad job of lighting up the trail. I suppose I could aim it down a little bit more. Uh, I could also probably have some nicer trails here. <laughs> but, uh, man, uh, this is actually really not as bad, I guess, as I thought it would be. Uh, it's 
Like I said, definitely not real wide. If I was to have to make a turn, well, then I can't really see what I'm doing. It's getting me where I need to go, but I don't think I would want to do a ton of nighttime trail riding with this. I think you can kind of see that hydraulic line in there a little bit. I don't think that's killing a whole lot of light, but it obviously does take a little bit away from it. Uh, you guys may have noticed some of the squeaking. I'm not exactly sure where that even is, something in the forks. So if you guys are in the market for a top of the line off and on road bike, this is probably not what you want to be looking at. However, if you're looking for something that will get you down the gnarliest trails that you can find in your woods to go hunting or camping or fishing or whatever you want to do off-road with one of these bikes, I think this is probably the best option that you're going to find out there. That extra width in the tires and the gearing and the motor that they've got in here really works very, very well for that. Obviously, on the road and on mountain bike type trails, there are going to be a few trade-offs with both the tires and the gearing on the bike. But all in all, I think this is definitely a bike that you can have fun doing any of the things that I showed in the video today. So if that's what you guys are looking for, this is definitely a bike to take a look at. I'll put a link again down in the description along with any discount that I can offer you. And also have links for everything that I use in the video today. Again, if you guys purchase from any of those websites, it will help me to continue making videos like this. So thanks to you guys. Thanks to all my patrons out there. Until next time, guys, get out, enjoy this beautiful world any chance you get. And if you can't do that right now, here's more videos to check out in the meantime.